The following podcast is brought to you by the Geeks 2 Network, and all opinions are those of the hosts. Listener discretion is advised. It's time to talk wrestling. This is the Dave Dynasty Show. And welcome to the Dave Dynasty Show. I am your host, Dave Dynasty. I am flying solo today for the opening and close of the podcast. Uh, it is uh, We are recording this on Christmas Day, and Ike Isaacs is, uh, I don't know, he's out and about uh, either visiting family for the holidays or stealing the trees in Whoville. I, I don't know what Ike Isaacs does in his free time, and uh, I really don't want to know. He, he Perhaps he's mourning the loss of George Michael. Uh, who we just found out passed away. Uh, man, 2016 has been a suck-ass year. Uh, and, the, and the celebrities we've lost. So, uh, man. But anyway, yeah, uh, no Ike for the opening and close. But he did conduct a wonderful interview with John Wayne Murdoch, which will be featured on today's episode. Uh, but before we get to that, we'd like to start off. Uh, we'd like to uh, thank our sponsor, uh, of the Dave Dynasty Show, LuchaMaskUSA.com. Visit them for all your Lucha Libre needs. You know you got a little cash for Christmas. Well, visit LuchaMaskUSA.com. Order something cool and support them. And if you're going to buy anything through Amazon, if you got some gift cards or whatever it might be, uh, go to DaveDynasty.com. The top of the left-hand column, there is an Amazon link. Click on that. And uh, then do your shopping. You, it, it does not cost you any additional, and uh, it supports the show. We get a little kickback for anything you order, and again, no additional cost to you. Uh, help us out and do that. I know some of you had to have gotten Amazon gift cards and are going to go on to, to, to order some goodies. Uh, so help us out. Um, but yeah, so uh, when this is dropping, it'll be the day after Christmas. We'll be, uh, it'll be Boxing Day. Boxing Day for those of you... Uh, in the UK, uh, happy Boxing Day to you, uh, yeah, and, um, we have, uh, like I said, got a very cool interview with, uh, John Wayne Murdoch, uh, Midwest wrestler, uh, deathmatch participant in a, a, key cog in the IWA Mid-South promotion, uh, cool interview with him that Ike did. Uh, we're going to get to that in just a moment. And we also have a new Warner's Wisdom uh, with good old Mance Warner uh, recorded on Christmas Day as well. Old Mancer uh, bringing you his wisdom. So, uh, yeah, lots of good stuff. We're going to jump right into it, take a little break. And when we come back, we will have our interview with John Wayne Murdoch. Stick around. Visit LuchaMaskUSA.com for official high-quality Lucha masks and merchandise. Straight from the luchadors themselves. They have a huge and always growing inventory, so check back often. That's luchamaskusa.com. And welcome to the Dave Donnie Show. My name is Ike Isaacs, and today I am joined with a IW Mid South regular and probably one of the better hardcore wrestlers I know, John Wayne Murdoch. How are we doing today, sir? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. Uh, you know, it's. It's funny to hear people introduce me on podcasts and stuff because, you know, never in a million years did I think I was going to do some of the things I've done. So <laughs> I'm still very humble in that in that respect. So, well, I'm very humble to have someone with uh, with, with someone like you on the show because, to be completely honest, um, I have a very uh, kind of, kind of like a guilty pleasure when I watch, you know, for. Uh, Heart like death matches and hardcore matches and like those matches like that. So I was very excited to interview you because I want to kind of see the inside of that as well as see the inside of John Wayne Murdoch. For sure, man. Like like I said, I love talking about it, and a lot of people do not like the death match thing, but uh, you know, it's it's got me to where I am today. So you know, I'll always uh, always be on its side. Absolutely, and as well, it's also a pleasure to have you on the show. And, uh, I'm, again, thank you so much. I'm super pumped for it. Definitely, uh, I'm good. 
Oh, you're good. Now I was gonna say, so just kind of start off the interview, get the ground, get the ball rolling here, break the ice. Uh, we always ask people, when did wrestling really hook you? Uh, I was a little kid. Uh, I remember going to like the National Fairgrounds and watching you know, Tommy Rich, Wolfie D, Jamie Dundee, Tracy Smothers, and all those guys. I was hooked from the from the start as I was a little kid. Uh, and then about 13, I just started training. I've uh, seen a commercial on TV about local training. I went, I hit it up, I followed it through. You know, my dad drove me everywhere. You know, I was pretty much in the business at 13, training and wrestling. Absolutely. So uh, when when you began training, uh, where did you train and who trained you? Uh, excuse me, come again? Hold Sorry. Up. I said, when you did begin yeah. training, when did you train and who trained you? Uh, when I when I began training, I was uh, I think I like was almost fourteen years old in this uh, promotion called NWA Main Event, uh, run by Mike Porter. It was one was the local commercialized. So I hit it up and uh, you know I, I got there, you know, and I just come on, I just did backyard wrestling. Like I knew nothing about you know what it was going to take to be a pro wrestler. So I show up, you know, just in my backyard wrestling gear, biggest goof around pretty much. So, like, I got in the ring. Uh, the guy come out. Uh, I forgot his name, but it was Mike Porter's uh, trainer or whatever. He gets in the ring. I lock up with him and swear to God, I cannot make this up. He literally says he knows more than me and gets out of the ring. That's pretty much how my first training session uh, went. So pretty much... With only learning a headlock, because I'd watched at like every kid in the backyard around that time, I watched Tough Enough. I thought I knew what I was doing and, and you know, all, all that. So I knew some of the basics right off. So that got me in the door at NWA. That, and that speaks a lot about how promotions are in Tennessee, or was at that time. They just do anything, you know, to get you in the ring. So I started wrestling, you know, and I had no idea what I was doing. And I was getting beat up in the locker room because I'm this young little punk kid in this grown man's business. I had no respect. I had no, you know, I, I did not belong. So, you know, I pretty much realized that if I was going to continue doing this, one, I needed to get better, and two, I needed to toughen up because I was getting my ass handed to me. So pretty much I always say that my love for pro, pro wrestling was beat into me. You know, I was beat up. I was, you know, pretty much this kid in the man's world. So I ended up getting better slowly and surely, and, you know, here I am today. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, you you know, you've been probably, you've been wrestling the independent wrestling scene for such a long time now. Uh, not for a long mm -hmm. time, but for enough time to kind of realize the ins and outs of it. And now it's become this amazing scene. So in your opinion, what is the best and worst parts about it? About the wrestling scene in Indiana or in Tennessee, or just in general? Just in general, the independent wrestling scene. Uh, I think it's, uh, you know, a lot of promotions, uh, you know, they book on a buddy system. Uh, you put this book, you know, in the office or whatever. You give him, so he's going to book. Well, now you've got five or six of these buddies on the show that might not be as good as some of the other guys you can book, but you're booking them because they're your buddies. And it just, yeah. it, it, it sucks. You know, Tennessee is the worst for it. You know, Tennessee is this bubble of just guys that have never went anywhere. There are these local legends that don't mean shit, you know, and they just stay there. And they get, they get booked because their buddies are booking them. Yeah. So it's, you know, there's three promotions down there that are using all the same talent because it's the buddy system. And it's okay to make contacts and put people over and give people, you know, a good name or whatever. But, you know, booking your buddy just to book him and he is some 15-year-old vet that's wrestled once a month for 15 years, it's not right. I think that is the major thing that's wrong with indie wrestling is just booking off the buddy system. Absolutely, absolutely. So then what would be the best part in your mind? The best part would be just the freedom to pretty much do. It's your canvas. You know, no one's telling you not paint by numbers. It's not, you know, somebody telling you what to paint. It's not, you know, everybody would love to be in the WWE 
or NXT or whatever, but you get a little more free reign here. You know, you can talk about what you want on this book into opposed to what you're making on this book and you know, you can you have your money for your merch. I think it's it's a cash cow for much. If you're not making money doing something, some kind of hustle, you know, something you're not doing the indies right. You know, there's pictures, there's everything that you can do on an indie level to make to make money. So maybe it's freedom, yeah. I think that's that's the best way to put it. Freedom on the indie level yeah, is the absolutely. best thing. Absolutely, yeah, definitely. I know a lot, so. a lot of people I've talked to, uh, they always say that, you know, the freedom is a great thing, like you said. It, you know, you can pretty much do whatever you want. But at the same time, you know, that freedom to some people seems like too much. I've heard a lot of some people say, you know, it's like, oh, I'd rather just be at one place and get paid really good. But then there are some people who are like, I want to travel all over the world, you know. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Like, like I said, that's the end goal for everybody. But right now, like I said, I'm just having fun doing doing this. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so you're you're kind of what I, I what I from my understanding is kind of your home right now is IWA IWA Mid South. For sure, I think that's a fair fair assessment. Yes, definitely. And uh, you, you know. I just want to know what it's like to be a part of that company. What it's like to be part of its history. Uh, man, it's still you know it's still crazy to know that my name is on the list of guys like uh, Eddie Guerrero, AJ, uh, AJ Styles, CM Punk, the guys that have held the IWA World Title. You know the list is never ending. So just to be on that list and to be on it three times, you know that's. That's pretty awesome. Also, you know, winning King of Death. Uh, so many people that have won that. Some that are still with us. Some that are gone. You know, yeah. so being a part of that history. You know, there's there's really nothing you can do in IWA that's not going to make you a part of some history. You know, you're going to be on something with some name. Just being a part of IWA Mid South. So I think that's the you know that's the best part. And also, you know, unlike other promotions, this is a this is a family. Uh, I think uh, when, we, when you're a part of IWA Men's South, you wear different hats. You know, your job might not just be wrestling. You might be in charge of doing this or, or doing that. It's, we all make this happen. It's not a one-person show. So. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So uh, you, from my understanding also is that, you know, since you've been with you know the company for a little bit now, and as you said, you've kind of joined the ranks of some very, very prestigious names – You've kind of gotten close to uh, one of the the heads of the company, uh, Ian Ron. Uh, for sure, for sure, definitely would say we've been close, so close that you know, actually, I live with Ian. Uh, Absolutely. And, you know, and getting close to somebody like like you know, everybody comes in IWA, and I mean, I can I've said this to him, you know, I've said this in front of him. Everybody comes in the IWA expecting the worst. We've all heard every bit of Ian Rotten drama on the internet. We, we all know. You know, it's no secret. It's out there, you know. Uh, so you, when you go in IWA, it's sort of a shock to see, you know, who Ian is now. You know, and, you know, I can always say that, yeah, I know that some people he has screwed over, some people he's admitted to. He's admitted to a lot of his stuff. You know, but what I can say is he's never fucked me over. He's always treated me good. He's always done everything he could for me. He's put me in the ring with people at the time I didn't even belong in the ring with. And he did it on, on blind faith, on faith that I would do him, you know, do him justice. So I have nothing bad to say about Ian at all. Absolutely. So then, you know, your guys' relationship, you're pretty close. Like you say, you, you, you live with him. So that's that's pretty interesting, you know. I've not, you know, that's that's really cool though that you kind of made that bond with them ever since you've come to IW Mid South. For sure, it's it's crazy. Like the at King in 2011, my first death match. He pretty much, I, I think, from that start, took a liking to me. You know, I was Damian Payne then, and he had always said that I needed, you know, a new name change, and he always said that I looked like Dick Murdoch. So. I think him taking a liking to me then, and then seeing that I took his advice and I changed the name and, you know, come back sort of in this different way. I think that just proved him that I listened to him, and he, I think he liked that. So when I come back to IWA, you know, and I've 
been here ever since. You know, I think we've uh, grown real close. Absolutely. So <clears throat> you're you're pretty young, um, but you're becoming one of the more experienced guys who is working right now. And right behind you is a whole new group of young guys. Do you feel like a responsibility to help advise these guys in a way that other people have advised you or how like even Ian has advised you? Do you have like a you feel like you are responsible for these guys? For sure. I think I think uh I think if more people uh took that responsibility or felt that they were responsible for the younger guys then, you know, the business wouldn't be as shitty as it's gotten places or, you know, we wouldn't have guys hurting each other in the ring or, you know, some of the stupid things that happen because, you know, we would police our own. You know, if there's nobody looking out for somebody, then they don't know what they're doing. And then if they don't know what they're doing, they're going to grow up not knowing what they're doing. And they're going to train somebody else. And guess what? That person's not going to know schools that are teaching the right thing. Uh, I think, yeah, I think I definitely have a uh, responsibility for, for the kids, you know, uh, definitely guys like Corey Storm and uh, Jonathan Wolf and Cole Roderick, all those guys, I definitely look out. Uh, Myron Reed, a guy that, you know, is going to blow up. Definitely think 2017 is, is his year, uh, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, as you're kind of taking some people under your wing, you know, you're talking about these young guys that wrestle with you. Uh, who, who was it that kind of took you under their wing? Who was the guy, other than maybe Ian, who took you under their wing? Uh, the guy that pretty much took me under his his, his wing was a guy named Tony Falk. Uh, he wrestled in Memphis back in the day, world class. Uh, he's one of those guys that, you know, did things in the business, but never he never got as big as he should have. Had the talent, just never, never worked out, never had the body per se, but had it mentally and, and was a hell of a worker. Uh, he, he took me under his wing wing. He had a promotion in uh, Nashville that he pretty much was my home for 10 years. Pretty much. Uh, I stayed there and learned and, and, and did my thing. You know, I would travel other days, but I would stay with him, you know, and that's pretty much a testament to my loyalty is I stayed with that man for 10 years until the, company pretty much folded uh yeah. but yeah he was the first one taking me under my wing his wing absolutely absolutely so we're going to kind of step away from you know the more personal aspect of wrestling and we're going to kind of talk, talk about something i mentioned earlier is that you compete very regularly in death matches in that re- style of wrestling for sure for sure and you know now we're talking about it and I, i'm sure you've seen on the internet and everything I had a story of, you know, of maybe being, my blood being dirty or just that fear because you know, I bled with somebody, he yeah. got arrested, found out that he had needles on him, and it scared me, you know, and I went public with it, uh, you know, which is something not a lot of people do, uh, you know, and I expected to meet some of the response that I got was pretty incredible with people, you know, saying how much they respect that. Now, of course, I got some douchebags and some people that, you know, just wanted to give me shit to give me shit, you know. And, well, yeah. you know, I know a lot of people gave me shit for still wrestling. Well, one, this is still how I make money. Two, it was one night was a sixth man. The other night was uh, a singles match, so it was very easy. Like, very good, but I wasn't rolling in glass. I wasn't bleeding with anybody. Yes, I know accidents happen, but that's different than just rolling in broken glass with somebody. Yeah. So, you know, I was pretty, I was, for one, I was pretty sure I was clean anyway. Two, I'm a hypochondriac, and I freaked out, and I, I went to Facebook and as a form of, of my nervousness, and maybe I shouldn't have rushed it and made it sound that bad. But to me, it was my whole world ending because I love deathmatch wrestling. So, you know, I just freaked out. You know, I'm proud to say that I am clean. Everything come back clean. So, you know, you hear it here. So I'm clean. Absolutely, absolutely. And I'm very glad to hear that. 
So, you know, like you're talking about, you know, some people probably gave you a lot of shit for that. You know, the whole, you know, you oh, you did this yourself type deal. And just like internet trolls, a lot of critics are very harsh towards that style of wrestling. And how, how in your words, do you defend, uh, you know, death matches? I, because I'm, I think it's because I see both sides. Uh, you know, I, I, I love death match wrestling, but I am also against guys going out there and just swinging weapons because they do not know how to wrestle. You know, I am against that. That does give deathmatch wrestlers a bad name. You know, I can I can think of a whole promotion that gives deathmatch wrestling a bad name, as in IWA Deep South. You know, when they can look on the internet and seeing somebody get stabbed with a box cutter, although Spider Boudreaux, I love dearly, but you know that gives deathmatch wrestling a bad name. It does. At the end of the day, you know, Kevin Brennan, you know, guys that do stuff so stupid they're going to get somebody hurt. Yeah, that that does suck, and I understand why fans shit on that. On the other side of that, what I do, what guys like Masada, guys like Devin Moore, you know, all Nick Gage, we all know how to wrestle. They know how to wrestle. You know, guys have come before me. You know, the guys that I look to have learned from. Ian himself can wrestle. Yeah. You know, I was sitting in a training class with Ian about a month ago, and I just sat there and watched him and the holds he put on and his, his you know, transitions in between holds. He knows how to go. Like, he's just not tight paid death or, or swinging a baseball bat or a chair. He can wrestle. You know, and I think that's what makes what we do uh, different. You know, and that's, that's why I love deathmatch wrestling, that form. You know, just not going out and swinging weapons because you can't put on a headlock. So yeah. I, mean, I think there's a difference. And, and, and for, some, for so long, we we get lumped into that other group, and we're not that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, and, I, and I, like you say, a lot of people do kind of crap on it because there are people that do stupid things, and they put the words deathmatch, and they try to associate themselves with something like that. But it's not what that is. It, it, that's just stupidity, you know. Like you said, swinging a knife or a box cutter at somebody does not constitute as a death match. I and mean, it may be a real life death match where you know you're gonna die. But yeah, <laughs> for sure, you know. I mean, yeah, some of the things I've done, you know, I've uh, coming off of the scaffold or the or the building and all that. Yeah, I've got shit on by guys like Al Snow and. You know, coordinate and guys like that. But like I said, you know, at the end of the day, it's my body. You know, nobody forced me on that roof. Nobody forced me up that scaffold. I did it on my own. You know, I did it, and I know what they, you didn't get paid enough. Or I've never, again, I've never been screwed by Ian Rotten. If I've done something and my life was in danger, I could get covered on the back end. He has never screwed me. Yeah, absolutely. So, I said I. Well, uh, so uh, kind of along with that, what is one of the wildest death matches you've ever competed in? Uh, probably me versus Nick Gage was the wildest. Uh, yeah, it didn't have a crazy step, and yeah, it didn't have a lot of crazy weapons. But there's something that not a lot of people, if you've never been in the ring with Nick Gage, do not understand. It is truly like fighting for your life in that ring. He is that amped up. He takes what he does that serious, and he just raises your intensity just being around him. Uh, so as far as that goes, yeah, that's going to be the crazy. And how long we went. Like, it was almost over 50 minutes or so. Oh, gosh, yeah. Yeah, so I think that, that's got to be my craziest. That was at King of Death 2015. Absolutely. So then, uh, again, kind of along the same track of thinking, what's the worst injury you've ever sustained? Uh, worst injury was probably uh, my shoulder, looking back. Uh, even though it didn't hurt, uh, it was still pretty gruesome to have my shoulder sliced open like that and be able to see inside my shoulder and see tendons and muscles and, and stuff like that. So like that, that was probably the scariest thing. 
Absolutely. So uh, before we kind of move on any further, I do want to uh, ask you, because uh, I was at the uh, IWA Mid-South Ted Petty Invitational this year, and I, I got the pleasure of seeing you in a match with Chris Hero. Yeah, talk about crazy. Like, honestly, I never thought those words would be spoken together. So, <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy. So, first of all, I just want to say that the match was absolutely spectacular. Um, Thank you. I, I, like I said, like I, when I saw, I, I was... I didn't really know who John Wayne Murdoch was when I went into the Ted Petty Invitational. I really didn't. But by the mm-hmm. end of by the end of that, I felt like I knew John Wayne Murdoch. And something I wanted to tell you, uh, because I was sitting on the turnbuckle uh, where you got pow- our pile drived off of to f- at the finish of the match. I was right next to turnbuckle, mm-hmm. and I want to say I heard every single headbutt that you and Chris Hero exchanged. Every single one. And it honestly made me almost queasy to hear your heads just clashing together. And I just want to just ask, like, oh. how how was that match? Like, how crazy was that match? <laughs> Man, like, it was, it was so surreal. Uh, you know, being in the ring... Uh, because the match was supposed to happen, me versus Hero was supposed to happen a year ago or so, and the IWA show was supposed to be on. Uh, something happened with the building or something, and we, the show got canceled. Uh, so me and Hero never happened at that point. And I always felt robbed, and I always felt, man, why, why, not, why did it have to happen tonight? You know, I felt very bitter about it. But then I realized that, okay, maybe I wasn't, maybe that was, you know, the universal way of saying I wasn't ready. Um, so to have had it happen in the finals of TPI was the best scenario possible for me. Uh, yeah, like I said, standing in the ring and watching him come down. Because I don't know if it translates in pictures or, or video, but Chris is not a small man. Oh, and I, and not. I, that's not a, And that's not poking fun at his weight either. He's a huge guy just in general. So, you know, I knew I was up for a fight. Uh, and, yeah, you know, the the headbutts was pretty much, because I had known Chris to have done headbutts back in Ida Bay in the day, but I didn't know if he was off for that now. And that was pretty much me just going for it of, you know what, what's the worst that can happen here? And he went with it, and it was good. Like, it was, it was good. <laughs> Absolutely, like I said, that that match was incredible. Uh, you know, the your matches before were awesome, and I was like, yeah, you know, this guy's he's re- he's really something. You know, I saw you fight, uh, you know, Shane Mercer, uh, Cole Radrick. Uh, I'm losing the other guy's name, but I also saw you fight yeah. with uh, Trip Cassidy, and it was. Just an amazing display of athleticism, but then that match with you and Hero to me was obviously match of the night. Not just because it was the 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 final of the TPI, but because quite literally you guys both gave it your all in there. And I remember afterwards, Ian even said that you had a pre-existing injury going into the match. For sure, my knee uh, my knee's been messed up. I messed my knee up on uh, my debut for CZW uh, when I gave the Canadian Destroyer to Lucky 13. Uh, I tweaked my knee, uh, and it, it's went out on me ever since. I've had to have a brace. I've taped the brace on. I've duct taped the brace on. And my knee, yeah, my knee is pretty screwed, but I was not going to miss the TPI. I was not going to pull out. And I think Ian knows that. I think he knows that. When the chips are on the table, I'm going to be one of the guys standing there at the end of the day, no matter what. Uh, so, yeah, I went out there, and you know what? I learned something. You know, uh, I know everybody says they learned something in a match or, you know, they took this away or whatever, but I truly learned from my match with Hero. Uh, there's just something that he can teach you, and he can teach you it in the ring as you're in front of a live audience, as you're... You know, in one of the biggest matches of your life, he still finds ways 
finds ways to teach you little things. And uh, I think, you know, anybody's finishing course in a school is they've got a wrestle hero because you will know if you're able to take this or not or you're able to do it because he will put you to that test. Absolutely. Like I said, one time that probably, like I said, one of my favorite matches I've seen in, in the enti- entirety of the time I've ever watched Mount Wrestling. Because, you know, I really wish that there was a way to translate it because it, there's no way it'll be able to translate the film. But I wish there was a way to translate the, the, the feeling you get in your stomach when you're literally hearing two men just headbutt the shit out of each other. Like, that is just... Yeah. That's unreal. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's definitely it's definitely a crazy feeling. I've got a hard head, and, and I pretty much should cut out headbutts because of the the trauma I've had in the past and the post concussion syndrome and all that. But there's just something in me that will not will not let me cheat the fans. Yeah, and yeah, so a night or any night for that matter. So a little more sure. on the, a little more on the personal side of you. Um, we always ask people, what's one thing that people don't know about John Wayne Burton Doc? Mm, I don't know. I, I pretty much live an open life. I don't think there's anything that people don't know about me. Uh, I think that's uh, the the best thing about me is I'm, I don't hide anything. You know, I'm straight up with Absolutely. everybody. So. so, yeah, I don't think there's nothing anybody doesn't know. <laughs> Well, that's good. That's good. It's always good to hear. Uh, you, but yeah, absolutely. So, you know, kind of moving forward, looking ahead, you know, you've done some crazy stuff, but there's only 10 days or so left in 2016, and then we have the entirety of 2017. We have a whole new year. What are your goals for 2017? Uh, my goals for 2017 uh, are going to be a little different from 2016. 2016, I made it. You know, pretty much, you know, my year to win King of Death. Uh, my year to do my best I couldn't in death matches and prove that I belonged. And I think I did that. You know, I won King. You know, I had an outstanding match with Masada. You know, I had, I was in Zandex tournament. You know, I debuted for CZW, even though that got screwed up. Uh, you know, I did all this, so, you know, my goals for 2016 were, were I was in the finals of TPI, I got my match with Hero, like, everything went well. 2017, I really think I'm going to, you know, show people that, hey, you know, I can still wrestle. You know, I think I'm going to focus a lot more on wrestling this year. I'm going to still do death matches, I'm going to still do, you know, what makes me me, but... I want the wrestling matches. I want the guys like David Starr. I want the guys that are going to get me in the ring and put what I know to the test. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think everybody's... Yeah, 2017 goes... That, I think that's my goal. Like I said, 2017 is to show them that I can still wrestle. Absolutely, and I think everybody is very... I'm ex- I know I'm excited for 2017. I'm excited for John Wayne Murdoch in 2017, definitely. So then kind of also on that same th- train of thought, you probably wrestled a lot of people you never thought that you'd ever step in the ring with, but what are some guys that you'd like to wrestle in the future? What Do you have like a list? Uh, I do have a, a, a list. Uh, a lot of people on it have actually been taken off because I've, I've actually been in the ring with them stuff, but you know... Uh, C.J. Parker, uh, I don't know what he's going by in the Indies, uh, Juice Robinson or something like that or whatever. Uh, that guy, I would love to be in the ring with him. Uh, you know, I think everybody, you know, selfishly wants that one match with Cody Rhodes because he's tearing it up on in the Indies. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, the one match that I'm holding out for and the one match that needs to happen is me and June Kasai. Okay. So, you know, huge deathmatch name in Japan. Huge, you know, deathmatch start all over. Uh, I think that, uh, I think me and him could really tear it up, and it would be really good. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, well, as we wrap up this interview, you know, it's it's been a real pleasure talking to you, John. It's honestly, like I said, you know, having 
having had never really heard of John Wayne Burdock going into TPI, you know, I learned a lot about you that night. And then also after that, I looked you up. I was Googling you, trying to see what else I can find out about you. <laughs> but Oh, definitely, man. Absolutely. But, uh, but are there any other topics or thoughts you want to share with the audiences that are listening to J- the Dave Dynasty show before I let you go? Uh, pretty much, you know, I say this on every podcast I'm on, you know, just support, you know, your local indie wrestling, support your local show, shows in your town, you know, get in the car, drive, you know, an hour or two, support the shows in your area. Uh, if you can't drive out, you know, go to uh, smartmarkvideo.com, buy your favorite shows, download them, just support wrestling in general. All I ask is don't, you know, don't illegally download it. Don't, you know, torrent sites. Don't do that. Uh, you know, that takes money. It might not be directly taking money out of my pocket, but down the line, you know, shit trickles down. And, yes, it is taking money out of my pocket at some point. So, you know, support indie wrestling. Support IWA Mid-South. I think 2017 there's going to be a great year for IWA. I think a lot of big things are in store. So definitely, you know, keep your eyes out for that. So, Absolutely. Well, like I said, it's been a pleasure having you on here. But where can fans follow you and follow your career? Is there any social media you have? Uh, definitely. You can uh, John Wayne Murdoch on Facebook. I have a, a regular page and a fan page. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm maxed out on friends on my personal page, but I always set up the, the uh, other page uh, too. I'm not big on Twitter, Twitter, but I have one, John Murdoch at 25. You can look me up on YouTube, John Wayne Murdoch. You can also look at some of my older stuff to see where I came from. Type in Damien Payne. You'll find that, Payne, P-A-Y-N-E. Uh, there you can do that. Uh, Dustin Diehard Designs. Uh, you can buy, you know, one of my uh, – they've got a shirt on there you can buy. Uh, and I should have new merch coming out very soon. So you should go to pick up merch at the table at any local show you come to. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, John. It's been a real pleasure having you on here. Uh, it's been awesome getting to know you and got, kind of seeing a little more about in the life of John Wayne Murdoch and the life of doing death matches. So thank you so much for coming on here. No problem, man. Check out Geek Stew for all your geek and wrestling news and podcasts. Visit geek-stew.com. Gather around for life lessons from professional wrestling's own, Mance Warner. It's Warner Wisdom. All right, people, here we go. We're back at it. It's your boy, Manser, right here. Old Manser, sitting here, got a cold beer, light beer, Coors Light. I don't know if I can say that on the air, but hey, man, maybe they give me a couple free t-shirts, a couple light beers. Got a light beer on deck. My knowledge in my brain ready to be spit out onto this potty cast here for you people. You dummies out there. Not everyone's a dummy, but most of you are. Okay, right here on the Dave Dynasty Show, it's another edition of Warner's Wisdom. Mance Warner, your favorite wrestler, and mine, me, right here, dropping knowledge for all you people out there. Now, we did a special edition, holiday edition last time. If anyone saw me on the Instagram, on the Twitter, on the Facebook, I almost caught up with old St. Nick again. He was on a motorcycle. Old American badass St. Nick out there riding down the middle of the road. I was, I was right behind him, tried to get him. He saw me. We made eye contact. He remembered what I did to him last time. He acted like a little baby. He took off. So I turned around, got me my light beer, and went about my business. Nah. Your boy, Mancer. Old man Manser, old Manser, king of big dog style, Larry to light beer, the king of the trailer court, right here. Got my light beer in hand. Gonna give y'all some knowledge. On this week's edition, I'm gonna talk about courtesy, common courtesy, respect, all them items. Now hold on here, I'm getting parched. I'm gonna drink this light beer real quick. It's a good light beer. Ah, oh, pretty good, pretty good. Pretty good, okay. First of all, let me rewind a little bit. Old Mancer currently doing this. It's Christmas Day. 
I'll crack open my lot beers. Eventually, Dan will go out and I hand some lariats out to some people, have some Christmas gifts. But as I sit here, let me walk you through this common courtesy, respect issue. All these items right here, I got going through my brain here on this topic. I'm out buying Christmas gifts. And if old master opens the door for you and you walk through that door, what do you say? People think about this for a second. What do you say? You say, thank you, Mancer. I, first of all, will never open a door for any of you dummies. But I did see this occur. I saw this old man open a door for his little bimbo on her phone. She came walking through the door, never even looked up. This some bitch just thought the door was open on her own for her because she's so special in life on her phone out there tweeting or Instagramming or whatever it was. Just walk through the door. Old man sitting there opened the door for her. She didn't say thank you. Merry Christmas. Happy holiday. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. Nothing. Didn't say nothing to the old man. That's where we begin, people. And we take this journey on a respect issue. Common courtesy. Not being a dickwad. Now, there's an example for all you people. I will now parlay this into professional wrestling. There are a lot of rude people out there in the everyday life. So my advice to you, show a little common courtesy out there, people. Or you're going to have people like me, bald-headed, in a bad mood all the time, a real dickhead, a real asshole. You do something like that to me, I'm going to come up and just hit you in the head. I'm going to headbutt you. I'm going to split your dome wide open like a melon on concrete. Another example. As I am Christmas shopping. I'm out doing my thing. Checking the list. Checking it twice. Who's naughty and nice. All the business. All of it, people. I go into a store. There's only two people in this store, me and the owner of the store. This man bothers me as soon as I walk in. Can I help you? Are you looking for anything? No, I'm good. I go about my business. Five minutes past, you come over. Hey, you sure you ain't looking for nothing? Can I help you? You looking for anything? No, I'm fine. I'm browsing. He asked me three times. On the third occasion, I lost my shit up in here. I turned to the old man. I said, are you fucking deaf? Can you hear me? <clears throat> I didn't burp after I said that. And he did not burp before he said what he was about to say. His eyes got big and, and they were bulging out of his head. And he kind of stumbled for a second, didn't know what to say. Before he could think of anything good to say, I cut him off. Because I ain't going to be one up by this old guy in this store on Christmas Eve when I'm out there doing my business. You know, old Master's a late shopper, man. I'm out here partying, drinking these light beers, all these goodies in my fanny pack. I get there when I get there. So before he can say anything, I tell him one more time. Sir, common courtesy. Please, leave me the hell alone. It's almost Christmas. This is as nice as I get with anybody. I'm going to spare you and not bust your head wide open with a headbutt or one of these vicious lariats that I will load up and unleash on your face. And then he looked at me and politely said, I apologize. Go about your business. I said, damn right I will. There's a perfect example of how even old Mancer can show some common courtesy and respect to people out in the everyday happenings of the world on the highways and byways. Now, as I said earlier, I'm going to parlay this. I'm going to transition this into the square circle, into the ring for all you people. A little knowledge, a little something else for you. Here's my take on it, people. 
common courtesy and respect are things you should show in everyday life. And this goes into pro wrestling as well. When you step in that ring, you should wipe your boots off before you get into the ring. I see nobody do this but me. And that's okay, man. I'm an old timer. I'm old school, baby. That's what I do. People, just start wiping your boots. It's a simple thing. Show a little respect before you get in there. Pop, pop. I'm doing it right now while I'm talking to you. Just walking around. Okay. Number two. I'm going to go into this real quick. This is probably going, you're probably going to go, hold on. What, what, you're saying you shouldn't so respect them. You should, you're saying you shouldn't be showing the common courtesy that you just talked about for the last eight minutes, man, sir. Now, okay. Here's a little advice. When the match starts, dang, 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 the bell has been rung. If I see any more people Circle around, stop, and shake hands anymore. I'm going to charge that ring and start headbutting people. People in the crowd, people in the ring, people in the nosebleed, people outside smoking a cigarette, people getting light beer, unless that light beer is for me. And then I'll take that light beer and then proceed to headbutt them because they did not give me two. Now, I disagree with shaking of the hands. At the beginning of the matchup. There's no need for it, people. Let me explain this to you. I step in that ring. I wipe my boots off because I got respect for that ring. I get in that ring. After I'm done starting up a ride out in the crowd, whoever comes out is going to face me inside that ring. I will not be shaking hands with you. For a simple fact of this, people, why would I shake hands with a man that I'm about to beat the shit out of? Because if I don't beat the shit out of this man, I ain't going to be able to pay my lot bill. I ain't going to be able to pay my, my TV bill, pointing out my, my big, beautiful TV in here. I'd have no light. I had no TV. I had no roof over my head. These are things that I need, people. So I ain't going to shake hands with some, some jabroni I'm going to beat the shit out of and then collect my payday. If I don't beat him, I don't get a payday. He beats me, he gets my payday. He gets the envelope with my money in it. So it just don't make no, no damn sense to me. You get in that ring and start shaking hands with people. You step in the ring and try to shake my hand. There's two ways it's going to go. One, <clears throat> I won't burp before you do it. One, you get in that ring and try to shake my hand. I'm going to knock you out real quick. Number two, I'm going to get in that ring and I'm going to put my hand out for you to shake it. And then if you're a dummy, if you're a dummy and you put your hand out, you know what you're going to get right there? I'm going to rear back and give you one big whack a That's one big whack a do right there, baby. Whack a do. I'm gonna hit you with one. One big old whack a do. That's spelled W A C K A D O O O O O O O. And you add in all the other symbols that you want to. That's what you're gonna get hit with. It don't make no sense to me to be shaking hands in that ring, people. Now, if I'm at the grocery store and buying some gifts, Getting some light beer. I got to get rude with somebody. That's one thing. But I always try to show my common courtesy and respect. But in the ring, after I've shown my respect and wiping my feet, it's anything goes, baby. I'm going to pay my bills. I'm going to sell some t-shirts that I always got with me because I'm always out there selling my t-shirts, people. And now I'm going to get my payday because I'm going to knock somebody out. Now, you people go about your business. Have a good Christmas. Tune back in every week to the Dave Dynasty Show. He's pretty good. I'm damn good. You listen to me over here. Mance Warner, Warner's Wisdom. Look it up on, this show's on the, the YouTube. So what we got, the YouTuber. 
I'm sure there's links on the Instagram, the Twitter, the Facebook. Some called SoundCloud they were talking about. SoundCloud. Uh, what's that other one? The iTunes. Which I guess iTunes is the big one out of all of them. I don't know, people. YouTube, whatever, man. Y'all have a good one. Ain't going to be as good as mine. Because none of you can be as good as old Mass Warner. Old Master. Now, I'll see you next time on another edition of Warner's Wisdom. The best thing going in the podcast world. And we are back on the Dave Dynasty Show. We have concluded the interview with John Wayne Murdoch. We have concluded this nugget of wisdom from Mance Warner. And uh, we're wrapping up another episode again. This is your host, Dave Dynasty, flying solo for this episode. Ike Isaacs will be back next week. Uh, Yeah, you know, if nothing else, he does give me comic fodder. And uh, that's always a fun and a good thing. Uh, But yeah, the next time you hear us, it will be 2017. This is the final episode of 2016. Dropping it on you. We just dropped the holiday special. We hope you all gave that a listen. And again, I apologize for my attempt at uh, the rapping and the singing and the reciting of the poem. But it was a lot of fun uh, to do something like that. I am a huge fan of Christmas specials, so I, I wanted to do something. It was fun. I hope you enjoyed it. Even if uh, perhaps my musical talents are not what uh, you would hope. But uh, so, yeah, next episode will be 2017. And we'd like to wish you all a very, very happy new year. Uh, And be safe, whatever you do, if you go out and and have a good time, which, you know, we like to go out and have a good time. But please be safe. Make sure you have a designated driver. Uh, Let's keep the road safe for you and for others. And, uh, yeah, here wishing you a prosperous 2017. And, man, maybe it'll be, again, maybe it'll be a little gentler on uh, taking away some of our our idols and our heroes, some of the people that we are fans of and looks up to, because 2016 has been harsh, harsh. So, oh, man, hoping for a better 2017 on that front. But that uh, that's that's all we got. That's all we got for this episode. Once again, we thank you for joining us. Visit DaveDynasty.com. Follow us on all of our social media. Uh, lots of cool stuff we post and retweet and, and everything and share. Lots of, lots of cool things if you're in into wrestling, uh, particularly independent wrestling. We we support and encourage and share those that, we, uh, that we're that we fans of, that we like, uh, the, including our guests we bring on. Uh, we're a big fan of John Wayne Murdoch. I uh, was wanting to have him on since day one and, and finally got him on, and, and we couldn't have been happier, couldn't have been more excited. So, uh, yeah, so follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Uh, I do have a blog that you can also check out a link there at Dave Dynasty. Dot com And then you can also follow Mance Warner and Ike Isaacs. There are also links on the website for that. They are on Twitter as well. Lots of fun stuff from them. Uh, once again, thank you for joining us. Happy New Year. Uh, be good to one another, and we will see you next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah.